Welcome to SEC Network Baseball on SEC Plus from a bustling Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's game two of the series between the Aggies of Texas A&M and the Tigers of LSU. It's also game one of a doubleheader today. We're expecting a lot of rain tomorrow, so we're playing two today. Alongside Kyle Peterson, I'm Clay Mathic. We've got LSU football going on here in town with the spring game, NCAA gymnastics, and we've got an exciting game here in the SEC West. And LSU, KP, is starting to figure it out now. They're on a five-game winning streak. Yeah, they are, and, and they've won their last three in the league, and that's important, too. They, they started four and three, which isn't bad, but you get to seven and three a third of the way through the season within the SEC. That's pretty darn good. Five in a row. Offenses come alive. The ERA in this pitching staff is very, very different in the last three weeks, and that's important, too. Started this season, three of the first four starters were freshmen. It's not the same way now. They get Eric Walker back, and we'll see on the mound today. And Antoine DePlantis has more home runs this season than he did all of the last three combined. He leads him with seven home runs this year. There's a look at Texas A&M, 24-7-1. and one. They get a great start from John Doxakis last night. No timely hitting, however, and that's kind of been the issue lately for the Aggies. They're going to pitch it, and you see what the numbers are. They're third in the country in ERA. Second in strikeouts per nine. And their one-two punch in Doxakis and Asa Lacey, who you will see today, is as good a one-two punch as you'll see in the country. There's just not enough thump. Braden Shoemaker is the one guy that can give them that, though. The shortstop started all three years. First year at second baseman, the last two years at short. But he is the best offensive player probably in the field. And one of the better ones in the SEC. He's now hitting 14 straight. And it will be Eric Walker going on the mound today for LSU, the sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. He's 2-1. and one with a 4.60 ERA. He was supposed to start, obviously, tomorrow. Moves up a day. And he was really a key to that series win last week in Starkville. Seven shutout innings against Mississippi State. He'll try to stay on a roll here today. Best start of the year. And, and Walker's still coming back off of Tommy John. He was a big part of their run a few years ago in 2017 to national runner-up. Tommy John, after that, did not pitch last year. Armstrong's still starting to come back, but he is coming off his best start. Seven shutout against State last weekend to win that series. You know, the weather is really nice right now. We've got a gentle breeze. And the nice thing is no rain. That's not going to move in until tomorrow. Bryce Blom is in the box, and we are underway in the first pitch. This is down. Blom, the leadoff hitter from Houston, a sophomore. Went 0 for 3 in the game last night. And here's the 1-0 pitch. That's outside, 2-0. Blom, a transfer from Ole Miss. Played in 12 games as a freshman for the Rebels a couple of years ago. Sat out last year. He has been a really nice fit for the Aggies. Here's the first strike from Eric Walker. Walker, a little bit better velocity today. He's been 87, 88 already with that fastball. There was a few starts this year where he didn't get it up above, above 86. Arm strength still continuing to come back now about 20 months off of Tommy John. And that just missed inside. Catcher Brock Mathis got to frame that pretty well, but doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. And it's three and one. And he walked him. So Eric Walker walks the leadoff man here in the first, and then that'll bring up Cam Blake. So here's a look at the SEC West, LSU. Just percentage points ahead of Texas A&M. A&M had that one tie in the series last week with Missouri. You see Auburn and Arkansas. Coincidentally, they're going head-to-head -head yeah. this weekend, game three today. Look at that. On the West, play six teams in the top 18 in the country just in the West. Ole Miss beat Florida in the opener. They're out in front of Florida in game two today. Mississippi State won their opener against Tennessee yesterday. Typical grind in the SEC West, as these two teams know very well, as Cam Blake comes up, and he'll put it in play. Tough play for Josh Smith. He'll go to second, and it goes into right field. On his way to third is Bryce Blom. He will get there, and sliding into second is Blake. So Josh Smith, who is going to have a, a tough play in the hole, throws it into the outfield, and Texas A&M is in great shape here in the first. That's what Rob Childress likes to see. Some of the breaks going his team's way early on. Rob Childress now in his 14th season as head coach of Texas A&M. That's not the bench boss, but 
we were talking to him down on the field before the game, and, and he was very pleased with the way his team played at times last night. They had the error bug last yep. night, but it starts to, to bite LSU here early on this Saturday. Yeah, it was a Dukoff error that got him last night. Then the Josh Smith solo home run in the eighth that gave LSU the 2 1 lead. Then Smith makes, Smith makes the error here in the first, and he hadn't done that very much. Just the fourth error of the year for Josh Smith at short. And now Braden Shoemaker at the plate. The big left hander swings and misses. 6'4, 190 pound junior from Wiley, Texas. Who was a preseason All American is living up to those credentials as we talked about on a 14 game hitting streak coming into the day. He's going to slice this one out of play. Shoemaker hitting 378 with runners in scoring position this year. And he has been on fire the last 24 games, hitting close to 400. He's driven in 30 runs over that span. And a chance to do some damage here right away in the first inning for Texas A&M. Trying to even up this series at a game apiece. Time called at home play. He has hit from the day he got on campus. I mean, the last three years, one of the best freshmen in the country just a couple years ago. And that's the one thing that Shoemaker has always had the ability to do. And that's put the ball in play, but this one's going to stay on the infield. And this is one of the few times you won't see Shoemaker get the job done with a guy on third base and nobody out. Smith makes the catch. There's one down for Jonathan Duca. Josh Smith at short. This is a ground ball off the bat. It doesn't look like it's going to be two. This is one maybe you want to you want to backhand. And Smith does a real good job of getting around the baseball. That one, though, all the momentum taking him away from that throw, it makes that throw a little bit tougher. You're probably not going to turn two. The left-handed Cam Blake getting down the line. He backhands that one, sticks that foot in the dirt. It's a much easier throw over to second base. Instead, went flying into right field, and everybody went up. So here's the walk-on senior from Kingwood, Texas, Jonathan Dukoff. He swings and misses it. The first offering from Walker. Dukoff played his first couple of seasons at Baylor in the Big 12, then spent last season at Houston Baptist. This is a, quite a story. Jonathan Dukoff. The 0 one from Walker. He's a grad student and started at Baylor. Was a Baylor for a while. Transferred to Houston Baptist. Has a sit for a year. And last year was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Went literally went through chemo during the course of the season. Cancer free now. Gets into grad school at A&M and, and calls Rob Childress to let him know. Rob said we knew about him in high school. We didn't really recruit him, but we knew about him. We knew about him in Baylor and, and invited him to come and work out. Had a tryout before kind of the normal tryouts in the fall. So yeah, why don't you stay around? Then maybe once you're part of the club. So Baylor to Houston Baptist fought cancer last year. Now heading fourth for the Aggies right now. And unbelievable. He'll. Uh, He'll have his advanced degree this year, wants to go into financial planning, but it's a it's a cool college baseball story for a guy that's really been important for him offensively. Cool human story. Yeah. Swung on and missed, and that's a big strikeout for Eric Walker. He gets Dukov to go down, so he retires the number three and number four hitters back to back after Blom and Blake were able to reach, and now he'll deal to Ty Coleman. Coleman comes in hitting 305, the true freshman out of Midland, Texas. And he'll take up out of the zone. This is the younger of the Coleman brothers. Junior first baseman Hunter Coleman out four to six weeks with a broken arm. Coleman's at third base again today. The 1 0. That skips in the dirt. Blocked by Mathis. Blom at third, he reached in a walk. Cam Blake, he's at second base as Josh Smith had a fielding error for LSU here in the first inning. Here's the 2-0 from Walker. That's foul straight back. 
So Texas A&M won two of three against Vanderbilt. Swept the series of Kentucky. Went one, one, and one against Missouri last week. A little unusual, but the, that two-two tie. Went extra innings. Ended in ten innings because of the travel situation for Mizzou. So that's how it was left. It's down the line. Hard hit. Foul. Texas A&M comes in. Playing some decent baseball, and they've got a, a decent resume up to this point. That, that Vanderbilt series victory looks oh, yeah. better and better all the time. Yeah, that one's going to look good. The non-conference, they played really well. The, the key for AM, you know they're going to pitch. They're going to pitch the rest of the year. It's just, will there be enough offense to be a team that's considered to be one of the national seeds at the end of the year? Crowd getting behind Walker. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Coleman. So Eric Walker works out of a jam here in the first inning. Texas A&M leads two, and the Tigers coming up for the first time. It's a way to work yourself out of a jam right now. So an infield fly ball, then strikeout, strikeout for Eric Walker. We'll see the Tigers' offense when we come back. Fans. Nine. Was down in the first inning, not without a threat, though, and we're going to see LSU here for the first time in game two of this series. Josh Smith will lead it off again. Healthy batting average of 349, setting the table for the Fighting Tigers, followed by Watson and Duplantis with those seven home runs. Chris Reed in the cleanup spot, Broussard, Beloso, Garza, DiGiacomo, and Mathis. Rounding it up. Five out of nine from the left side for LSU and they're going to face one of the best left-handed arms in the entire country. We talk about AM's one two punch. John Doxakis was outstanding yesterday. Six and two thirds didn't give up an earned run punched out four for Lacey. Stuff's probably a little bit better. It's a mid 90s fastball has been as high as 97 this year. Change up and a slider to come back behind it. 68 strikeouts and 42 and two thirds innings has given up just 22 hits. The stuff for Lacey when it's in the zone is absolutely overpowered. Paul Maneri is in his 13th year as the head coach at LSU, the Hall of Famer. Has six College World Series appearances, five with LSU, of course, that national title in 2009. You know, about a week or so ago, KP, he was as nervous as a long-tailed hat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> but now, you know, things are settling down again. It's for him it's the way it happens here it's crazy I mean you have a bad weekend and the, the sky starts falling and <laughs> at the end of the day he's got a lot of really good players yes, he does always does one two out of three at Mississippi State and State's a really good club and they beat a very good arm last night you, you win a game that Doc Saka starts or Lacey starts that's doing something on the weekend Asa Lacey dealing to Josh Smith midseason All-American Asa Lacey that's just do has a ring to it. Asa Lacey. Yeah. And now Josh Smith, two for four last night, including that game winning home run. He's got a hitter's count here now. Three balls, no strikes. Smith back in the leadoff spot. He was in the two hole last night. And that catches the outside corner. Home plate umpire Hank Hinneman today. Lefty comes home. Walked him. So both starting pitchers today walked the leadoff man in the first. LSU has its first base runner of the afternoon, and that'll bring up Zach Watson. Texas A&M's pitching has been absolutely outstanding, leading the SEC in ERA, third in the country. And the guy on the mound today is a big reason why. Yeah, he's a huge reason why, especially in that strikeout-to-walk ratio and, and whip. Lacey... Uh, Lacey's been dominant. I mean, it's a 148 ERA, and last year was primarily used out of the bullpen. But you could see pieces when he came in. The fastball first and foremost, the secondary stuff continuing to come. But he can go out and dominate you with one pitch if that fastball's working. And now the 19-year-old junior, Zach Watson, at the plate. He is on a 10-game hitting streak for the Tigers. Leads the team in batting average at 344. 
should say second in average coming into the day. It's foul ball. Zach Watson was a freshman All-American in 2017. Good but not great numbers last year and he was taken in the 40th round of the draft as a draft eligible sophomore so he decided to come back and that's a real boon for this LSU team. The thump of this LSU which I mean is the case for a lot of lineups but it really is for this lineup. First four or five in this lineup are the ones that usually do the most damage. And his Watson power numbers are a little bit misleading just two home runs but I mean he's he's got the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark at any time. Watson's been spending a lot of time working with the hitting coach John Ochenko working on his approach and it seems to be paying off. Easy throw over to first from Lacey. And you, you, you see Maneri tinkering with the lineup here a little bit, especially down six through nine, trying to figure things out. But even today, he's moved some things around at the top of the order. Yeah, Smith wants him to plant his read now, and when Cabrera is healthy, Daniel Cabrera not going to play this weekend. They hope they get him back next weekend. Those five are usually going to be in some order in the first five, and, and then the the challenge for Paul Maneri has been, what do we do with those last four? Mathis has been the regular catcher back by home plate. Grounded to third, snared by Coleman. He'll go to second for one to first. Got him, double play. 5 4 3 double play. And Lacey gets the ground ball he was looking for. Zach Watson can really run. I mean, he's a 6'5, he's a 6'6, six, 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 60 guy who can get down the line. For the freshman Coleman to go backhand on this. This is a really good double play. It's hit pretty hard. First, he got a glove it, then he gets rid of it right away. It's a perfect strike to Blom over at second base and a perfect quick turn to double off Watson. You don't double Zach Watson off very much at all. And for Lacey, that's a way to work around that leadoff walk. Defending was an issue last night for the Aggies, but they get a big twin killing here in the first. They committed three errors in the field last night. Antoine Duplantis up there now for LSU. He had a rare 0 for 4 night last night. A senior from Lafayette. He popped this one back over the grandstand out of play. This guy's been a regular in the LSU order since his freshman year. And again, uh, among a handful of guys who decided to turn down pro ball, at least for now, and, and, and come back for another year with the Tigers. Watson had a chance, the Plantis had a chance. Zach Hess had a chance at three come back. It reminds you of that 17 team. Brandon Robertson came back. Cole Freeman came back. Ended up pretty well that year. National runner up just two years ago for LSU. The planners checks his swing. Now it's two and two. Strike called in the outside corner. Lacey fastball so far has been 95 for the most part did show 197 mm. and now going entirely out of the stretch and Rob Childress told us before the game yeah. he's going to throw a lot out of the stretch today he does again and Duplantis spoils that one count rides along a two and two Asa Lacey sophomore out of Kerrville Texas. He has allowed one run or less in six of his seven starts. He's only had one bad one. Vanderbilt tagged him for five runs. Besides that, every other start for Lacey this year has been outstanding. The 2 2 to, to DePlantis. And that's outside. Full count. Lacey walked the leadoff man, Josh Smith, got the double play with Watson grounding into it. And now full count to DePlantis. The game two starter today for Texas A&M is to be determined. Ground ball for the second baseman Bryce Blom. And Asa Lacey faces the minimum here in the first. We have played one here at the box in Baton Rouge. No score. 
possibly in my life. Clay Matt for Kyle Peterson back here at Alec Box Stadium in Baton Rouge on a absolutely busy Saturday. I mean, you've got the NCAA gymnastics going on across the way over at Tiger Stadium. It's spring football. It, it is hard to get around this town, KP. It's a good thing uh, you were driving today. Yeah, no, you're welcome. I, I'm always forced to be your driver. It, it does feel, <laughs> uh, it feels good to actually have a little humidity. I mean, it's, yeah. this is the first I've felt it this year. Now, I, I won't say the same thing when we're back here in six weeks. I can promise you that, but today feels all right. No, it's pleasant today, especially right. with that breeze going from right to left. Mikey Honer, Logan Foster, Will Frizzell to hit here in the second for Texas A&M. They got a couple on in the first. We're able to push a run across against Eric Walker. Eric Walker. 91 total pitches last week, his longest outing since missing last year with that Tommy John surgery. What are you seeing here early on from him? Do you like it? I do, yeah. I mean, the velocity signs are very good um, because it's he's been 88, 89. The one thing with Walker, and it was really this way before he got hurt, is that the changeup is a plus pitch. It's not as big of a velocity difference as you see with some guys. It's sometimes just five, six, seven miles an hour, but it always has really good sync. His arm action is very good with it. And that's the off-speed pitch he's usually most comfortable throwing. 2-1 to the catcher, Honer. Now it's 2-2. Two two. Check that 3-2 count. And here's the payoff. It's off the end of the bat foul. Well, if Walker can go deep here in the first game, you say the same thing for Lacey. That really takes a load off because we've got a long day ahead we do. for both of these teams. And if, if you go to the bullpen too early in game one, that could spell trouble. This one hit well to right. And that is going to get down for a hit. It stays fair for Mikey Hona. On his way to second, he'll get there standing up. Mikey Honer. The junior from Houston is in scoring position. It's his first hit of the series. His first double of the year. Well, that wind right there is what kept this ball fair because it's it's blowing directly out to left field. Off the bat, I thought this ball was foul the whole way, but the wind was just enough to hold it. And I, I don't I don't think that Honer thought this ball was going to be fair. Instead, holds it up just along, stays fair down the right field line. It's a leadoff double here in the second for Honer. And AM now has had three guys in scoring position in the first two innings already. Here's Logan Foster, the junior right fielder. He had a double in game one, and he's on an eight game hitting streak. Takes his hacks at the first pitch. Foster is hitting 23 of 28 games, so he comes in feeling good at the plate. He's from Lincoln, Nebraska. Line drive to center. Coming on, the center fielder Watson. And he'll make the catch on the gallop. Well hit by Foster, but it's the first out of the second. And some balls have been well struck here, especially this inning by Texas A&M. And again, they haven't really been hitting the ball all that well, and they didn't get any timely hitting last night. No, they didn't, and it's a sluggy percentage in the power numbers that have really been the biggest challenge for AM so far. Just 20 home runs on the season. That's last in the league. The slugging percentage is last in the league. The average speaks for itself right there. And they don't run a ton either. Just 27 stolen bases. So it's as this season goes on, they're just going to have to figure out a way to, to produce more offense. But it helps when you've got one of the top staffs in the entire country. Will Frizzell, the starting first baseman today for Texas AM. He'll take the first pitch up out of the zone. Frizzell, a sophomore from Rockwall, Texas. He started 49 games last year as a freshman. He's been struggling at the plate, but he did have a pinch hit single in game one last night. That one is chopped foul over the LSU dugout. And 
And the regular first baseman for the Aggies, Hunter Coleman. Out for what could be over a month with a broken arm. We were talking with Rob Childress during batting practice today, and he says they had a, to put a couple of screws in that arm to repair the break. Time call. So they're going to platoon some guys at first base. Frizzell gets the start today. Man on here for Texas A&M. Second inning. No score. This one popped back up against the net. One and two to count. Texas A&M will host Auburn next week. They will be at South Carolina in a couple of weeks. The SEC East we got a big series going on today. Vanderbilt at Georgia. A game going on right now. Vanderbilt won the opener last night. Hit a solo home run in the ninth to tie it. Ethan Paul with a home run later on to win it. Homer is definitely getting the attention of Eric Walker on the mound. He had a walking lead about two pitches ago, and I think it's one reason why Walker held Force the hitter to call timeouts just to slow the feet down of Mikey Honer on second base. Long set from Walker. It's way up out of the zone. Two and two. Mikey Honer, you know, typical catcher, doesn't have. Struck him out. Fooled him with the changeup. And then he strike out number three here for Eric Walker. Two down. This is the one he's so comfortable going to. The fastball's been 88, 89. This changeup, 82 miles an hour. The arm speed is the same. And that good extension from Walker allows that ball to have a fair amount of sink when it comes in towards home plate. He'll throw it to righties and lefties. A lot of times it's it's a little bit better against lefties because it has that late tail. And this pitching staff has looked very different in the last three weeks than it did at the beginning of the season. The ERA is down about a point and a half. The whip significantly better. Striking more guys out and they're not walking as many in the only three shutouts of the season. It's one of the reasons why LSU has been playing so well in league the last few weeks. And the only blemish, they lost two out of three at Georgia, who's a top five team in the country. And they all tight ball games. Now Deloach, who for half of the season, at least last year, was a leadoff hitter, and for the first 20 or 25 games last year for AM was probably their best hitter. Book got out on him a little bit. I think it's the one thing you see in this league. There's so much data. Deloach has really scuffled since then. Game in games. That speaks to your point. Man at second. Two outs here in the Texas AM second inning. As a strike in to the number nine hitter, Zach Deloach, two and one. Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure on a, on a sophomore after yeah. maybe a breakout year early. You know, when you come right out of the gate and you have a good freshman year, maybe you put a little pressure on yourself. You do, but there's also a lot of support standpoint. They have more things to prepare for. With all of these games on TV somewhere, yeah. you don't lack for you don't lack for the amount of go assistant coaches from AM today. That was one thing he was talking about just in general. His sophomore year is such a proving ground because you can't go you can't go fool anybody anymore. They've all seen you. Walked him. So that is the second walk allowed by Walker. And for the second straight inning, Texas A&M has two aboard. Walker will try to work out of this jam as he did in the first, but it's back to the top of the order. And Bryce Blanc. Guam walked to lead off the game. 295, four homers, 14 runs batted in. He has started all but a handful of games at second base. Has a team high four home runs on the year. He swings hard here and lifts it out of play.
Texas A&M 6-3 and 1 today and get the heck out of Baton Rouge. Doesn't have to spend an extra night here in game move. And there's the fourth longest streak in the nation. Two and one. Rob, the former assistant in Nebraska, and he's got plenty of Nebraska. Former Husker, Jeff Christie at first, former Husker. And cut the outside corner. Kyle Simons, who pitched for him a few. Comes to get Blom here. The 2-2. Two -two. Full count. This will be the 44th pitch for Walker already. Runners go. Here's the pitch. Up and out. Bases loaded. And here comes Cam Blake with a golden opportunity for Texas A&M to take the lead in a pitching visit here from Alan Dunn, the LSU pitching coach. The bull keep as yeah. many as many guys sitting down as possible. You don't want to crank the bullpen this early. Bases loaded for Cam Blake. Blake reached on an error and was stranded in the first inning. He pinned this early. Bases loaded for Cam Blake. Blake reached on an error and was stranded in the first inning. He lines this one to right field. It's going to get in the gap off the wall. Honer scores. Deloach scores. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Bases clearing double for Cam Blake. And Texas A&M takes a 3-0 lead. Boy, that was scorched as the wind pushed it to the power alley in right center. It looked like a first pitch changeup, and, and Blake just leaned on this one. So bases loaded. you got to think you're going to get a strike right away. May have gone up looking first pitch changeup, but this ball smoked because the wind is going to take it to the bigger part of the ballpark. And when Duplantis turns his back, that usually doesn't mean good things because he can go out and get everything. It was played as well as it can be from Watson. Which actually made the play fairly close at home plate. Smith with a good relay, but Bryce Blom gets that hand in there. It's a bases clearing three run double for Cam Blake, and he eggs strike first. So Blake has seen two pitches today. He's reached base both times, this time a bases clearing double. And it's 3 0 Texas AM. Yeah, a little shimmy there from Cam Blake. Stealing your move. Yeah, right. And the best hitter on this team, Braden Shoemake, at the plate here with two down. You know, it's it, it's pretty simple sometimes. You know, don't walk guys. Yeah. Uh, and Eric Walker kind of playing with fire here in the first couple innings, and he got burned. First inning. The whole barrel he wants. Now it's two. So now the pitch count. Keeps creeping up there for Walker. I like the idea. Trying to go fastball in. That one just missed off. The most consistent one today has probably been the changeup from Walker. See if he goes back to it here. This will be his 50th pitch of the afternoon. Fly ball left field. Coming over to Giacomo to the line. And he will make the catch in the inning. But not before. Texas A&M gets three runs with two outs. First pitch swing at Cam Blake, and this ball was in the gap the minute it came off the bat. Three-run double for Blake, three-nothing eggs to the bottom of the second in Baton Rouge. So Texas A&M sophomore left-hander Asa Lacey can settle in now. He's got a three-run lead to work with. That's always nice. When you're working on the mound against a tough team like the LSU Tigers, Chris Reed, the cleanup hitter, will be followed by Broussard and Beloso here in the LSU second inning. He's Kyle Peterson. I'm Clay Manfred. And we were talking to Rob Childress before the game, and he is very impressed with his sophomore lefty, Asa Lacey.
Thinks he could be one of the best left-handers he's ever worked with. Yeah, as he should be. I mean, he goes for Rob Childers. You go lefty, lefty to start every weekend right now with Doc Sackis and, and Lacey. Steph's a little bit different. Doc Sackis is up to 93, maybe a little bit better, but Lacey can be 96, 97. We've seen it up to 97 tonight. It is a power fastball. Secondary stuff's getting better. The changeup is a little bit better than the breaking ball. Brock Friedman, uh, our pitching ninja. You know, everybody's pitching ninja. Uh, he's he's going to break down this for us. We're going to be talking about that in a little bit. but Yeah, it's fun. I mean, Rob, really over the last 18 months, the pitching ninja side on Twitter has just gone ballistic. See a bunch of big league guys, Marcus Stroman, Mike Clevenger, Trevor Bauer, that are really active with it. So we've got the ninja doing some stuff for us this year. Just some overlays to show you as we talk about these pitches exactly what it looks like with a trail going towards home plate. We'll show you Asa Lacey's just in a minute. He's got some particularly good stuff to break down. Yeah, it helps when you have guys like this. <laughs> <laughs> 3 1 fastball just kind of a get me over 95 right there. Full count to Chris Reed, senior from Baton Rouge, leading off the inning. And that hit the umpire on the right hand of Hank Hitterman. So Chris Reed is aboard. Let's go to the pitching ninja stuff from Rob Friedman. All right, so we're going to fastball change up. These are the two pitches that we'll talk about the most with Lacey. You see some breaking balls today against the lefties. The key is the arm speed is just the exact same. Grip changes it. You see the swing right over the top of the change up. Change up will have a little bit more sink to it. He'll throw it to lefties and to righties. You see that dip right at the last minute. Those are the two put one over the top of another. So mid 90s fastball change up that's a plus pitch slider that's getting better. It's the control is the only thing that would give you any issue right now with Lacey. He's now walked the layoff man in each of the first two frames. He has gone five plus pitchers to every batter. Now he faced the minimum in the first inning and this, this will be the fifth hitter he's facing here today. But are these early warning signs if you're Rob Childress. Yeah maybe a little but it, it's uh, it's just overthrowing a, a little bit sometimes you can see the numbers where he ranks. 14 strikeouts per nine opponents hitting significantly less than 200 against him. Stuff is never the issue with Lacey. 31st round draft pick of the Indians out of Kerrville High School in 2017. He will go higher than that. Next yeah year. I think you're right. <laughs> So a man on Chris Reed at first. He is not a threat to steal. This is Broussard fouling it off. There was a change. Back to back change ups right there. Brent Broussard, senior from here in Baton Rouge as well, product of University High School. He has been platooning at second base. Son of Burke Broussard, who was. LSU starting second baseman on their first College World Series team back in 86. Two balls and two strikes. Another full count. That's just the second fastball out of five pitches that Lacey's thrown right here. Brent Broussard doesn't have an extra base hit this year. You see the buck 86, they're all singles. Just surprising that three of the five are off speed pitches right here. I, I mean, I think you throw in mid 90s and guys haven't squared that fastball up all year. We're trying to complicate things a little bit too much. Third straight full count for Asa Lacey. Read it first. And he'll check the runner. Yeah, he's going. Palmineri may he may take a chance here. Put Reed in motion. It doesn't feel like a day where, where you're gonna get 9, 10, 11 hits off of Lacey. He may give you some help and put some guys on, but don't be surprised if there's action as this game goes on. Reed stays put. Fly ball to right coming on is Foster. He'll make the catch. Battling a little bit of sun out there. It's kind of a hazy sunshine today. So Reed will scamper back to first. Broussard is retired. And there's one out for Kate Belosha.
Beloso is a freshman from River Ridge, Louisiana. Beloso was recruited to be the everyday first baseman. Started last night, went one for three. But you know, like a few guys at the bottom of the order, KP, he has struggled to stay consistent at the plate. But with Daniel Cabrera out of the lineup with the injury, he stays in the lineup today, gets another start at first base. There's real power for Beloso. I mean, that's the one thing. He, he does have the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Not an easy calling here, though, left on left with a mid 90s fastball. The 0 1. That was at 83 off speed pitch. The ball and a strike. He's got a little bit of a Jim Tomey look, this Kate Beloso character. <laughs> Six foot 227. One or two. Back to back sliders right there. The first one just missed off. That one you can see Beloso gap on. I thought it was a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Came back over and caught plenty of the plate for strike two. Read it first. One down. Tigers trailing 3 0. Beloso checked his swing. They appeal to Kevin Sweeney at third, and he did not swing. Two balls, and two strikes. Could see having to get dialed up for that velocity though. Getting the hands going right there after seeing back to back sliders just held up. Boy, that handcuffed him. Beloso goes down and strikes. He's upset with himself. That's a big strikeout, the first of the day for Asa Lace. This one just explodes in on the hands of, of Beloso, too. I mean, it's. You could almost see it in his mind, the hands start, and he's trying to hold them up, but at that point, just can't stop the barrel of the bat from going all the way through. First strikeout for Lacey is a fastball that would have been ball three. Saul Garza will come up with two down. One of two Juco transfer catchers that Paul Maneri brought in this offseason. He takes strike one. He is a sophomore from Edinburgh, Texas. Two thirty-three, no homers, nine runs battered in. And two strikes. You can stay right there if you'd like. Ninety-five on the inside, black. That one usually works out pretty well. First two innings, Asa Lacey walking the leadoff man, trying to work around it. Both times. Chop foul. Well, it hasn't come easy for Lacey today, but... It, but again, he could uh, get through the second without giving up any runs. Still hasn't given up a hit. Here's Reed over at first. Struck him out. So Asa Lacey back to back strikeouts to finish the second. Reed is stranded. And we have played two here at Alec Box Stadium. And Texas AM has a 3 0 lead here in Baton Rouge. Wedding. Baseball in the country, Alec Box Stadium. He's Kyle Peterson. I'm Clay Manfick alongside our great crew here at the SEC Network. Glad to have you along here on SEC Network Plus. Game two of this series, game one of a doubleheader today from Baton Rouge and Texas A&M out to a great start in their pursuit of evening up this series at a game apiece. It'll be Dukoff, Coleman, and Honer, four, five, and six for the Aggies. They got three last inning against Eric Walker, and this is lying down the line. First pitch swinging is Dukoff. Who struck out his first time? Walker had 33 pitches in the second inning. He's up over 50 already. Oh, 
Duke off as we talked about came to Texas A&M with a lot of Division one experience. He's been one of their most clutch players lately. A lot of big hits for the Aggies. He had a two run pinch hit single in the eighth and a walk off single to beat Vanderbilt three Saturdays ago. We talked about that big series win for Texas A&M and Dukoff was right in the middle of it. Two and two. Big series here in the SEC West talk about Vanderbilt and Georgia in the SEC East going head to head. Got him. Strikeout. Good start for Walker here in the third. Second strikeout of the day for Dukov. Two seam fastball on the inside part. You could see him trying to pull that barrel, pull those hands in to get that barrel to it right there. Walker's used a fastball pretty well today. Four strikeout. He's that two seamer that he runs in. Even though the velocity doesn't doesn't compare to Lacey's, it does have really good life at the plate. That time first pitch changeup fouled off by Coleman. Coleman a strikeout victim. He's 0 for 1. You see the line on Walker. Three walks, four strikeouts so far. And he's ahead here, nothing and two. Walker's one of those guys, too, where he, he, he can get significantly better as the game goes on because he's going to figure it out. I mean, his his history, and I know he's still coming back from Tommy John, but the history indicates he's going to throw strikes. So if he walks three guys in the first few innings, you feel like he could breeze through two or three and, and find that control again. Ground ball. Josh Smith with another chance. He had an error in the first inning. No problem here, two down. You know, KP, we were uh, talking about the SEC West, and you know, big matchup in this series, obviously. The SEC all around is going to have a lot of big matchups throughout the year because of all the top 25 teams. But the Pac-12, absolutely loaded this year. And, that and, and you got a one versus two matchup this weekend. Stanford and UCLA. Stanford walked them off last night, beat them 3-2 in the opener. Oregon State's a top-10 team. Arizona State. It's 25 and 3 right now. Arizona State got beat by SC last night. But the West, but specifically the pack. He's swinging it well. Yeah. Over 400. He's already got 16 home runs on <laughs> Home runs like And you got to get it back. The Aggie got angry. Not West. Here in the third inning. Owner saw seven pitches his first to bat. And that got the umpire. Hank Hinneman's been beaten up here in the early innings. That's that's a rough start so far. That the foul ball. He took a one off the right hand early that was not a foul ball. Just, <laughs> we need a minute here. Uh, right off the top of the mask right there. You know, and it, he's protected, no doubt about it. It, it. it got him in the face mask, but that is a heavy blow coming in. Well, it is. The other thing is, it got in the, the very top of that mask. I mean, that can almost, he's not, umpires don't usually wear helmets. He's not wearing one. Could have, it almost looked like it could have clipped the top of his head on the way back, too. It hit the very, very top of that mask. Well, just think about it. Football players, even though they're wearing helmets, they can suffer concussions. Oh, yeah. Just because he has a protective mask on doesn't mean he can't have a serious blow to the head, but it looks like he's going to be all right. So another long at bat for Honer. Seven pitches in his first at bat. This will be the ninth pitch coming up for Mikey Honer. Line drive, base hit left field. Two out bingo for Honer. Great start to his day, and Texas A&M is a base runner with two outs here in the third. Logan Foster is first time up lined out to the center fielder Watson. 
got a good pitch to hit and hit it well. But Foster was out as Watson's got good speed out in center for the Tigers. Four hits now for Texas A&M. Swung out and missed. Nothing in two. Right on right change there from Walker. Thought we may see Honer run at some point during this at bat. Brock Mathis, the catcher for LSU, has thrown out just five of 45 this year. And those have attempted to steal. We see Honer's lead. The pitch to Foster. Swung out and missed, and Walker will work around that two out base hit. But Texas A&M still has the lead here. Three nothing as the Tigers come up in the bottom of the third. It'll be DiGiacomo to lead it off. A souvenir on this beautiful Saturday in Baton Rouge. Leah, your wedding looks amazing. I had help. Plus, I used Zola to make it easier. Working my registry, working my apps. Oh, a stock pot. Oh, this is so easy for me. I can do this all day. Go to Zola.com. This is oh. my pickup. Franklin. This Fly ball shallow left. Franklin. This is a no doubter. Over the monster and on top of the roof. And then smokes this one to short it in his glove. You can go with whoever you want. I can tell you what I'm going with. This. Here comes Versati. Here comes the throw. He's out at home plate. Deep to left. The SEC Network, ESPN, the home for college baseball. It's undeniable. Over 130 regular season games coming your way across all of our platforms. We'll have over 130 postseason games taking you all the way through the national championship in Omaha, as always. And it's just great to be a part of it again. We get conference tournaments here in like seven weeks. Right? It's coming We're not fast. That far away. Regular season more than half over for most teams. To Giacomo leading it off here for LSU, his first time to the play. You know, you and I came to Baton Rouge here about 10 years ago or so. You and I were talking about it today. Yeah. Um, and we didn't have very many regular season college baseball games. The commitment that ESPN has put in here to this sport and help it, helping it grow has been impressive here over the last 10 years or so. Well, and it's it's massively changed the game, too. I mean, just the, the amount of eyes that know these kids before they get to Omaha and the stories that have been told. I'll tell you what is cool is when you go places, and coaches will say this. Coaches will come up to us and say, hey, thanks. Like, thanks for thanks for covering the sport the way that you do because it benefits all of them. Yeah, we have. Uh, I think we only had a handful of regular season games about a decade ago, yeah. and now over 130. And of course, yeah. it's going to get even more now. ACC the ACC Network, Network. Next year. yeah, it yeah. starts in August, so it's going to be terrific next spring. Even more baseball across all of the platforms. The Giacomo Mathis in the top of the order, Josh Smith. The Giacomo, a true freshman out of Naples, Florida. We'll back away from that one, two and two. They're bringing more college base. It's over 800 productions. So, I mean, we are bringing more college baseball than ever your way. That is a strikeout. DiGiacomo goes down. Third straight strikeout for Asa Lacey as he's starting to find a rhythm cake. Here. Yeah, we had talked about it. The two glove side fastballs that Lacey threw to finish Garza off in the last inning were good signs of that fastball command coming back. And then this time he just flat throws it right by DiGiacomo. And that's what he can do. That last fastball of 96 and talking to AM's coaching staff, they said last weekend he held 94 into the seventh inning. So the Lacey stuff, even though he's thrown a fair amount of pitches so far, still very, very firm. And now the sophomore catcher Brock Mathis up there. Juco transfer from Northwest Florida State. Batting in the nine hole today. He's out of Ohio. 6'1", 200. Base is empty. One out. The 3-2 pitch. Walked him. And that is the third walk allowed by Lacey.
now back to the top of the order for LSU, and this is where they've been making their hay. Yeah, this is where the guys go. Smith, Watson, DePlantis, Reed at the top of this order. Daniel Cabrera not in the lineup this weekend. They hope to get it back next weekend with a thumb injury. But the overall numbers don't really jump out at it. It's kind of midpoint in the SEC, 10th and on base percentage. Everything else is right there in the middle. But usually when they do damage, it's the top of this order that's doing most of it. Josh Smith takes a breaking ball. Josh Smith's going to play in the big leagues, and I think he's probably going to play in the big leagues at shortstop. This is a kid that will hear his name called potentially the end of the first round, beginning of the second round. Really highly touted, battled injuries last year, but he's he's been healthy this year and has shown out at that shortstop position. Strike two in the outside corner. New defense last weekend. So watch off corner right there. And I mean, there's just no time to really rest it. And ultimately, he took that one right out of the glove corner right there. This is what he can do defensively. And, and offensively, Smith is a very good player. But defensively, this is all against Mississippi State last weekend. So watch him work around the ground ball. We'll show you one right here where the momentum is going to take him over to first. And then a backhand play later on. when he goes back into the hole, sets his feet. And this is what I wanted him to do in the first inning. When that ball that he tried to work around and throw the ball to second base. I like him on a backhand side that time, though. The Lacey stuff is too much. It's strikeout number four for Lacey. He's now struck out four of the last five. Lacey's got five or more pitches to eight of the ten batters. You know, nothing has come all that easy for Asa Lacey, but he's getting the results. And now he's going to try and get out of the inning here, but Zach Watson stands at the plate. Works ahead, strike one. Watson grounded into a double play in the first. Junior from Ruston, Louisiana. That mean that Josewak, Chandler Josewak, the sophomore left-hander, will get the start. But if they need Josewak here in game one, they will use him. Yeah, after losing game one, I think regardless whether you lose game one, Rob Childers is going to do everything he can to see if he has a lead to even this series up. And for Lacey, he's gone deep into ball games. I mean, last week through 119 pitches, each of his last four starts, he's thrown 100 or more. Just got to try to get him a little bit more efficient if you're a &M. This would be his 58th pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. Wow, fifth strikeout in the last seven batters faced. Terrific. Lacey walks off with a 3 nothing lead. We have played three here in Baton Rouge. The guy on first base, he goes strikeout, strikeout to Josh Smith and Zach Watson at the top of this LSU lineup. Backdoor break a ball to get Watson right there. Back here at Alec Box Stadium in Baton Rouge alongside former three-time All-American Kyle Peterson. I'm Clay Matrick. And it's a 3-0 lead for the Aggies of Texas A&M in this big SEC West series. I think you could say that about every SEC West series that's head to head this year. Uh, yeah. They're all big as six of the seven teams are within a game of first place or in first place as the day starts. LSU just percentage points ahead of Texas A&M to start the day for first in the division. Will Frizzell, Zach Deloach, and Bryce Blom leading it off. 35 and 9 was KP's career record at Stanford. Not too shabby, my friend. It was a long time ago. What were the years again? 90, 80. Oh, easy. oh no. easy. You're not exactly. <laughs> you got me by about 10 years. Oh, what are you talking on, about? 10. That's hit on the screws to right off the batter for Zell. But Duplantis jogs over and makes the catch for out number one. Some great years for you on the West Coast. And the Stanford Cardinal very impressive again here this year. What was your best memory? Your time out on the farm. Um, Nine hitter who walked his first time up.
Deloach, six foot two, 210 pounds, out of Louisville, Texas. The one two. Line drive, right field, backing off Duplantis. He's going to watch it sail over his head. Plays it well off the wall. Here comes the throw, but it's a little bit late, a little bit offline. Zach Deloach with a great at bat, and he has a double to show for it with one out here in the fourth. But to your point, there's some pretty good swings in that bat from Deloach. He just hit, about hit a ball out to left field, and this time takes a fastball in or half, spins on it, and hits. Hits it over the head of the planet. Right. There's not a lot of guys that hit it over the head of the planet, especially on a day where the wind's going to slow it up. He played this one perfectly, though. One hop off the wall, spins and throws, and Josh Smith, the shortstop, kind of yeah. gave up on this one. I mean, he was going out for a double cut just in case the first baseman Beloso was playing follow the leader to follow Deloach to second. I don't, I don't think they get him right there, but I think it surprised Smith that that throw was anywhere close. So back to the top of the order in Blanc. Bryce Blom line drive left field and that's going to sink down in front of DiGiacomo over to third is Deloach runners at the corners and one out for Texas A&M with Cam Blake coming up. So with that wind blowing the left field we've already seen it with that ball that Deloach just about just about hit out DiGiacomo has to play a lot deeper and you can see where he starts right here he's only four or five steps in front of the warning track out left if he's playing normal depth. Like the Plantis is in right field, that's an out. The ball's hit directly to him. Now you could argue the opposite if he's playing deeper, yeah. then he makes the player. If, if the Plantis is playing deeper and right, then ultimately he makes the, the play just before that. But I think some of that is the wind, and now we'll see the first action of the day for LSU's bullpen. Tom Blake has a couple of hits today. He has seen only two pitches from Eric Walker. Put them both in play. Last time up a double and drove in three. Again, the 3 2 runner goes. Pitch inside. Bases loaded again with fighting Texas Aggies. And the best hitter on this roster, Braden Shoemake, will walk to the plate. Braden Shoemake is 0 for 2 today. But this is a very, very dangerous hitter. Shoemake three homers, 31 runs batted in on the season. Hits the first pitch off the glove of Walker to Broussard. He'll step on the bag and get the double play. Well, sometimes you got to have the bounces. Yep. That was smoked by Shoemake, but it went right to Brant Broussard, who starts the double play. And it's the best thing that could have happened because ultimately, if Walker makes this play, it's a tougher double play. Instead, Broussard's momentum's taking him there, steps on the bag, finishes the double play, and LSU is out of a jam. Big pitch for Eric Walker. But now they need the offense to come alive. The top. Short sleeves. Short Rouge. LSU won it last night 2 to 1. But the Tigers are trailing 3 0 to Texas AM here in the first of this twin bill. And Asa Lacey hasn't allowed an LSU hit yet, but here's a guy who could certainly change that in a hurry. Antoine Duplantis. In fact, he has 308 career hits. Fly ball to center. Deloach has it measured, and Duplantis is out on one pitch. 308 career hits for Duplantis, chasing former LSU first baseman Eddie Furnace's conference record of 352. Of course, Jake Mangum probably going to get there first. Jake Mangum has 337 coming into the day but you could see some great names on that LSU list. Yeah Jake Mangum is getting close to Eddie Furness right now he's about 15 away. How about how about walk doing it in three years by the way. Todd Walker 310 hits in three years. Yeah. 
Everybody else on that list played four years at LSU. For Duplantis, it could end up to where Mangum and Duplantis end up 1-2 all-time in hits in the SEC. I, I don't think he can catch Jake Mangum just the way that Mangum has been going. Four hits again last night for Mangum. Really, the question for Jake is not if, but when at this point. If he stays healthy, yeah. when does he break the all-time hit record? Yeah, he could do it in a couple weeks, yeah. the way he's been. Yeah. That's where he could do it next week if he keeps getting four a game. Chris Reed, he goes toward the right field side, and running in is Logan Foster. Sounded better than left the bat, and it ended up being just an easy fly ball. Foster makes a catch for out number two. Kind of hard to judge fly balls here today if you're an outfielder, especially a little bit of sun, a lot of wind. High sky. Yeah, it's not the easiest day to be out there. And now Brant Broussard, who popped up to the right fielder his last time out. He's 0 for 1. Broussard, he'll swing at the first pitch and foul it back. Brant, the senior, at second base today. With a broken Warby Tom a few weeks ago, also a Hall of Fame coach. Swung on and missed, and Lacey has a 10 pitch inning, nice and tidy in the fourth. Three Tigers up, three Tigers down. We go to the fifth here in Baton Rouge. Three nothing AM. Which was done for at lenses. Five pairs for well, the second inning. All of the damage was done for Texas AM, and it was Cam Blake with a three run double. As Eric Walker had been messing around, you know, walking too many guys, and it, it came back to bite him. KP, yeah, I did two walks, ended up scoring that inning, and, and that's really the difference so far. You can see LSU without a hit so far. Ace Lacey stuff has been great. At his best inning of the fourth where he threw just 10 pitches and for Walker just not incredibly sharp today. Five strikeouts but six hits. Control was off today for Walker which is rare. You usually don't see that. That's why Matthew Beck's coming into the ball game here in the fifth. Six seven two thirty five. One of the key parts of this LSU bullpen. For Beck over the course of the season a point nine six ERA but the one thing that sticks out. Those are 17 walks and 17 strikeouts. When it's in the zone, it's been very good, and he's danced around some trouble this year, too. So we'll see how Matthew Beck does against this Texas A&M order, which has three runs on six hits. LSU hitless today. Game two of this series, first of two today from Baton Rouge. It's a fly ball that's going to get out of play for Dukov. Jonathan Dukov 0 for 2 today, a couple of strikeouts against Eric Walker. An average now 256. Strike one. You know, you told, excuse me, strike two, nothing in two. Arithmetic was never my strength. You're getting there. You told that story about Duke off in the first inning. Bears repeating. This kid has been through a lot. Fouled off and hit him and got it again. The home plate umpire deserves hazard pay today. That's that's three that I remember. And again, arithmetic is not my strength. But I think that's three times he's been plunked. One in the right hand, one in the left hand, and one on the mask on a foul ball. Yeah, this is. We're talking about catchers taking foul foul tips so often. Watch this one down in the dirt, and just short hops right into the finger. I... That's outside to Dukov. One and two. Dukov battling cancer has put that in remission. This is his third Division I stop. And AM is very happy to have him. He's the cleanup hitter today. Swung on and missed. So he strikes out for the third time. It hasn't been his day. And Dukov and Coleman have four of the six strikeouts. 
for the Aggies this afternoon. Coleman will come up next. Matthew Beck just grabbing a fastball, letting that one go. May have been just a little bit up and out of the zone, but Dukov just didn't. Seems like he's seen it all that well this year, because or all that well today. All three strikeouts have been on the fastball. Coleman struck out looking in the first, grounded out to short in the third. He's over two. Now, with the pitcher in sun and the hitter in shadow, as it is right now for Coleman, as it was for Dukov. Is that hard on the hitter at all? Yeah, it can be. And this is when you really want to use it from a pitching standpoint. I mean, you want to work as quick as you can because those shadows can be your friend. You like it when it when it's a little bit closer to you. Uh, and I think it, it will inch that way as the sun continues to go and move in the sky. But yeah, and it's going from sun to shade. And as we get closer, you, you literally see the ball change color when it gets closer to home plate. The one two to Coleman. Just missed. Matthew Beck. He has pitched 15 straight scoreless innings over the last nine outings. He's allowed just four hits over that span and 13 strikeouts. Make it 14 after getting Duke off. Struck him out. Back to back K's for Beck out of the pen. Strikeouts on a high fastball. And back from that 6 7. 6 7 height when he's coming towards home plate. If he can do that, if he can elevate that thing, it's it's a little bit tougher to lay off of. Just keep throwing that fastball into those shadows. Two outs for Honer, who hasn't been put out yet. He's got a double and a single. So, what is the plan here with your pulmonary? If you're Alan Dunn, you're thinking about the rest of the day. I think you're right. Yeah, with what, do you, what do you need Beck to do here? Go yeah, the I, distance? I think you're right with Beck as long as you possibly can. The reality is, you're probably going to have to get to somebody other than Lisa. I mean, the, the stuff just looks that good. You know, you know, I was yeah. eating the whole game. I, I just, I've never liked watching you eat. That's fair. This one is hit well to right center field and hit very deep. Wind is going to play with it. What a catch by Watson. He'll bump up against the wall, hauls it in. As Honer made a bid for his third hit, nearly rode it out of here. But Watson makes the grab, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for Matthew Beck. National headlines great start for the Pac 12 for the top six teams in the country come out of the pack but the SEC is well represented in the top 25 again they've got nine teams in the rankings Mike Martin in his 40th and final year as the head coach at Florida State his team has not started well in ACC play now just six and seven for the Knowles and they got dumped last night by the Canes Miami beat them 11 nothing in the opener uh, the RPI right now for Florida State is 107 Wow not used to seeing that Mike Martin has taken the Seminoles of the postseason all 39 years that he has been there and he has never won fewer than 40 games. Florida State comes into today at 18 and 11. Below should a lead off here for LSU in the fifth. Yeah that is not the way you want to go out. That's not the way college baseball wants no. a legend to no. go out. He has been to the postseason every year and. If he doesn't make it in his 40th and final year that'd be a shame. Yeah it, it really would. It would be they're just five and ten. Back Here's up the, the middle, hit. base hit. Beloso with the first bingo against Asa Lacey for the Tigers. And the Knowles just 5 and 10 since Mike Martin won his 2000th game, the only coach in the history of college baseball to do that. Good swing by Beloso, nice and short. Fastball still has plenty of velocity. That one just took it right back where it came from. Well, that's the best ball that LSU squared yes. up all day. Yes, it is. I don't know if I remember one really being hit hard up to oh. that point. And now Saul Garcia comes up. The LSU D. Mike Martin 80. But the ACC is uh, not as straight. He's playing well. They beat Reed yeah. Deppers and, and Louisville yesterday. NC State's got a good ball club this year. Uh, yeah. I mean, they and Arizona State were the last two teams to get beat. Beloso in motion here. 
3 2 pitch. No. Check the swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Jason Bradley, the first base umpire, rings up Garza. Garza not happy about it. Out number one. I don't know. First glance, I didn't think he went around right here. It's a 3 2 fastball. Yeah, he absolutely did. My first glance was wrong. Jason Bradley's was correct. It's another strikeout for Lacey. What is that? Eight? Seven. Seven strikeouts. Yeah, and the last 11 batters faced. He walked the leadoff man in both the first and the second inning, but since then he has really gotten into a groove. That one's been Super, and those are the first two guys that you're going to throw. They don't have to score a lot of runs. Devastating. You're right. Three, two. Walked him. Well, that's one thing that Lacey has had issues with a little bit here today. He's walked a runner, walked a hitter, I should say, every inning except one. So now two on, one out, and math is coming up. Trip to the mound here by Honer. 85 pitches, 50 have been strikes. Was not in. Game two of the two. Swung out. Switch pitching and that. Fastball out of way. Momentum from the catcher's already taken you that way. Struck him out. Second strikeout for Lacey here in the inning. He's got two down. And back to the top of the order in Josh Smith. And that's what Lacey's been doing all day, KP. When he needs a big out, he gets it. Well, and the other thing, too, you, you see the, the glove of home. They were trying to go fastball in. That one leaked and went fastball away. And for Lacey, the stuff is so good with that fastball. He doesn't have to be pinpoint from a control standpoint. He just has to keep it in the zone. So eight strikeouts now in the last 13 bat. Reminder right now for Smith. It, it could be, and sometimes this discussion is, okay, what are you seeing? Here's what I'm seeing. And there's an agreement, because Rob Childress calls the pitches. He could have seen something earlier, and, and there's discussions like this where he'll go out and say, hey, stay with me. Just stay with me on this one. I think I've got a good read. Or it could be exactly the opposite. What did you see last time? Look to Honer, the catcher. What did you see? And just make sure everybody's on the same page to go get Smith. Because this, for LSU, is the most important bat of the game. As the Giacomo's hit first. They don't they, go far away from here. They keep the best talent in the area at home. Again, the one, two. Swung away. Make it nine. Eight strikeouts today for Lacey. Make it nine. Nine strikeouts in the last 14 batters for Lacey. LSU strands two in the fifth. Was back off speed again, and Lacey strikes out three and any nine in the game so far for Asa Lacey. Giving up just one hit, it's three nothing axe. Have you left? Tell you, Asa Lacey's been the story of this one. He's got nine strikeouts now for the Aggies. Pitch count starting to go up. That's the only thing you would look at for Lacey. He went 119 last weekend. That's the most he's thrown this year. And he's not coming out of this one yet. Was he 94, 95 pitches so far for yep. Lacey? Nine strikeouts, struck out three in the last inning. 95 for the left hander. It'll be Foster for Zell and Deloach, 7, 8, and 9 for Texas AM, leading 3 0. Eric Walker, the start. He's got 16 straight scoreless innings over the last 10 appearances. Gets a ground ball here to Smith. Vacuums it up, throws across the diamond, one down. Four straight retired by Beck. All right, set last strikeout, Asa Lacey. We were talking about breaking ball, fastball over the course of the at-bat. The first changeup that he threw was right here to Josh Smith. Left-on-left left changeup. We talked about this with a pitching ninja overlay at the beginning. 
Yeah, he'll go left on left with a changeup. He didn't do it until the biggest spot of the at-bat, though. Didn't show Smith one, and I don't think he had showed one the entire game. So the third time that Smith had seen him, first changeup he swings over the top of. He struck out Smith twice, nine total in the game. Frizzell up there with one out. Is that what Rob Childress was talking about? Was he laying out that it? Left changeup until then, until you really needed to get it. Then he came back with it, got a big strikeout. This is a fly ball off the bat of Frizzell, shielding his eyes as Duplantis. That sun is really challenging now, not to mention the wind that these outfielders have been dealing with all game. But it's an out, two away here in the sixth. There's so much talk right now at the big league level about the way that, that numbers change first time through the order, second time through the order, third time through the order. Slugging percentage in the big leagues. Third time through the order, if they're facing a guy for the third time, the slugging percentage goes up about 60 points. The more that you face a guy, A, the stuff probably goes down a little bit, and B, the hitter has a better idea. Hit well to right. Going back to Planis. Great outfielder oh, makes the catch on the warning yeah. track. Slams into the wall, out number three, as Deloach is robbed of extra bases. Watson in center to Planis and right. Both of them can absolutely fly. Both of them really are center fielders, and it's as good of center field or right field defensively as you will see in the entire country. They've already stolen extra bases a few times today. DePlantis with a great jump, knows exactly where the wall is, and he steals a double right there. It's a 10-pitch inning. Still 3-0 A&M. When we started with It's that kind of day. I, I, he's not listening to us, obviously. Well, maybe, I guess, okay. on his phone. But Probably not. Maybe listening to the radio. If you are away right now, touch your nose if you're listening to him. <laughs> Take your hat and throw it on the field. That's not happening. Three nothing. Texas A&M with the lead. And Zach Watson, who just made that great catch in right field, will lead it off for LSU. Zach Watson, junior outfielder, trying to extend his 10-game hitting streak. He's 0 for 2 today, including grounding into a now you get thrown out. If you've been thrown out, keep running, man. You're probably not running enough. But three changeups right there. Oh, they're gonna. They got him. That's the second strikeout of Watson today for Asa Lacy. It has been a terrific day for Lacy. Only inning today that he didn't strike anybody out was the first inning. Then after that, Asa Lacy, especially in the third, the fastball started getting a lot more consistent. Backdoor break a ball right there to get Watson earlier than the fastball to get Broussard down and away. Fastball to get Mathis. Tenth strikeout was a changeup to Zach Watson right there. He's now struck out three in a row. He's done that two different times today. And for Lacey, we have seen why he is projected to be a high first round pick next year. And a guy that when Rob Childers talks about him, a uh, guy out second. For him? Sunday's game two today. Ground ball, first base side. I haven't seen a lot of ground balls thrown by Lacey, but he gets one there. And Duplantis is out number two in the sixth. Chris Reed coming up. This guy is an interesting story, Kate. Yep. Chris Reed. Reigning SEC Co-Player of the Week. Had a huge weekend at the plate in Starkville. Six for eight. Drove in six runs. But he might be the best story in college baseball this year. As far as it can only somewhere. Exactly what came through. Pitch of the at-bat coming up. The 0-2. Struck him out. Another changeup for Asa Lacey. That makes 11 Ks on the day. Texas A&M in great shape going to the seventh. Their number two starter has been dominant today. It's 3-0 Aggies. That doesn't even sound right saying number two starter.
Play back up here in the box at the box on this nice Saturday. The weather's really turned out to be okay. I, you know, it was foggy this morning, some drizzle even very early this morning, but the heavy rain's not coming until tomorrow. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Walks the wall. There's Walker. His day is done. Ground ball left side. The third baseman Reed. And that's a bad throw. Blom is aboard as Chris Reed throws it away. And that's the second LSU error today. And they've both been on that side of the infield. Yeah, that was a strange one, too, because Reed had all the time in the world. Tuba just stands up on this one and makes a high one hopper. And then I mean, that, that one just airmail. Beloso had nowhere to go. That throw gets to him a little bit earlier. Beloso's not as worried about the runner. He may actually have a chance to go and get that one. But you saw as that glove started to go, they pulled it back right away because he could feel the footsteps of Blom coming down that first baseline. Right. Bo goes into the stands and Bright. Single in the first, which was probably a gift. Should have been an error. Yeah, uh, I think it should have been Smith. And uh, a double in the second that we talked about, and he walked his last time up in the fourth. There's a good bunt. And Beck has one play, and Beloso kept the tag on it first. That throw a little bit down the line toward home plate. Beloso made a nice catch and tag, and over to third on it is Bryce Blum. So there's one out here for the Aggies, and Shoemake coming up again. Blake got down the line right here, too, because Beck had to hurry this one up, and, and that's it makes the play that much tougher for Beloso. Gets to it and right now, knows he has to quicken that arm up. Kind of drops down, and when he dropped down, it, it allowed that ball to tail back into the base runner. And Beloso kept that foot on there and tried to peel. I tell you, and I, I know that most of the time walking a guy is not the right thing to do, but if you're down three right now and you're forced to bring the infield in like Paul Maneri is right here, I, I would have really thought about putting Shoemaker on because if there's anybody within this AM lineup that can, man can manipulate that barrel enough, it's, it's Shoemaker. Nice put the line. Make on so you can get two two outs with one pitch. The one one to Shoemaker scorches it down the line. Fair ball. Blom will easily score from third. Shoemaker on his horse. He'll get to third. And that is a RBI triple for Braden Shoemaker. His 32nd run batted in this year. And there's a little more breathing room for the Aggies here in the seventh. It's four nothing. Infield in or infield back, and unless you're playing no doubles for Beloso, there's no chance he's going to get to this pitch or to this ball. It's a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Shoemaker just hooks it down the right field line, and he can run now. He's about a 6'6", 6 6'7", 6 60 runner. And at 6'4", he really gets going kind of from first to third is when he can pick him up and put him down. It's an easy triple for Shoemaker. He drives in another one, and he ags score for the first time since that three-run second. I just thought of who he reminds me of, and I didn't realize it until he started running. Greg Gagne. Do you remember Gagne? Kind of a long... Oh, the old twins. Out yeah. It, yeah. Kind of a gangly shortstop. That's who Braden Shoemake runs like. And uh, that's not a bad thing. Gagne, when he no. was... The senior lifts it into foul ground. The first baseman, Beloso, has it. And it comes out of his glove. So Beloso, who made a nice play on the tag to get Blake at first base earlier in this inning, uh, drops a routine fly ball and foul ground. Yeah, this one, he, he never looked comfortable on this ball. I mean, the wind really helped hold it. He was bringing it right back to him, but trying to shield his eyes from the sun with the glove Beloso was, and then just it just never looked like he had a good beat on that one. Pops out of his glove. It'll go as another error, the third of the day for LSU. Texas A&M had three errors in a loss yesterday. LSU with three today. Line drive, base hit. And Morris makes LSU pay for that drop ball. Shoemaker scores, two runs in the inning, and it's 5-0 Aggies. Pinch hit, RBI single for Morris.
breaking ball that just comes right back in the middle of the plate. Morris stays on it. And you got to have that feeling at the plate, too. I mean, that, that's new life because the pitch before that, when that ball goes up in foul territory, you automatically think you're out. He wasn't. Next pitch takes a time. As well. And he's faced some really good clubs. The 0 2 from Beck. And most of the stats that map. That rides in, gets all the way to the screen. Mathis has to chase. He better hurry up. Finally gets to it. So Morris will take second. Coleman, the hitter. Every Two strikes to Ty Coleman. You got Morris at second. He had a pinch hit single that drove in Bryce uh, Braden Shoemake here this inning. Two runs have scored. It's 5 0 Texas AM. Ground ball back to Matthew Beck. And that's the second time he's had to field his position this inning. And the second time he gets it out. Over to third is Morris. And that'll bring up Mikey Hona. Just go back and look at this inning, the way it lays out for LSU. Blom reaches on the on the two base error by Reed to start the inning. Pulled in nicely, and I would expect for the seven central, eight eastern game. It's going to be today. As we uh, look at Tiger Stadium over the batter's eye. By the way, the final 17 14, purple over white. Back again. That 6 7 frame comes in handy. But a couple of runs scored, and we saw two errors in the inning. Now, Reed, the bad throw from third, and then Beloso had one in his glove and foul ground and couldn't hang on. The Aggies tack on two more. It's 5 0 as we. How did you. Our frames need to have stock. Asa Lacey in line for his sixth win of the year, and he's going to give way for Joseph Menefee. Menefee comes in with a 5 0 lead here. Texas AM on top. LSU ready to hit in the bottom of the seventh. Joseph Menefee, another of the many left handers that Rob Childress has at his disposal. Yeah, and this is a kid that they're pretty excited about. He's coming off of Tommy John, had it last March, so literally didn't throw in the fall. Through the fall last year, ultimately. Comes back as Tommy John. So he's 15, no, not even. 13 months off of Tommy John right now, which is one of the reasons why they're going to off for LSU. Hit. And I, I wasn't impressed in the first inning or two because I thought he threw a lot of pitches to get the outs that he did. But I would say from the third inning on, he really was dominant. That's a walk. He was. Yeah, I mean, the stuff was dominant the whole time. But you're right. The stuff was a little bit in and out of the stuff, in, the, uh, in and out of the zone in the first two innings. I, I think what you saw from Lacey is when it is in the zone and when he has control of it, he, he will dominate about any lineup in the country. So Broussard walks to start the seventh, and now here's Kate Beloso. He's probably still kicking himself after that drop in foul ground last year. Beloso one for two with a single. In fact, he has the only hit today for LSU. And he's got two. Just a scorcher back up the middle. And that's basically what Beloso put it last inning against Asa Lacey, or I should say two innings ago. Both times he gets a left-hander. Beloso using the middle of the field. Gets a fastball in her half. Hands come inside, gets the barrel to it, shortens that swing up. And, and those are against Lacey and Menifee because Menifee's been up 94 already. I mean, that's that's not a comfortable left-on-left -left matchup right there. And below go out a part of the order. Scoring position. First pitch to the L.A. Aimed after. Right. Leave it up. Scheduled for an 8 Eastern, 7 Central start. Strike three. Boy, that was Garza 
getting fooled on the off-speed pitch. Yeah, and you, you saw Menifee go to what he was comfortable with right there. Four pitches in the at-bats of Garza, all were sliders. And the last one's a backdoor slider. Look at Mikey Homer, doesn't even move that glove. Like, knows that slider's going to come back all the way to where it's going to catch enough of the plate. Didn't move out to get it, just let it keep coming back into the glove. Big strikeout for the freshman Menifee right there. Twelfth time that LSU's gone down. Mm. And again, this is the part of the lineup where LSU has not only struggled today, getting bait. Won a couple of state titles in the state of Florida. With Canterbury. Speedy outfielder getting the start in left field today. Hoping to get something to drive. And he does. But it's right at the shortstop. Shoemake. And that's a double play. And it's been that kind of day for the LSU Tigers. For Shoemake pinched up the middle right here and the play was to play DiGiacomo. Not directly over second base but close. One hop off the mound and it is a perfect hop for the shortstop Shoemake. That's an easy 6-3 double play. And after the first two Tigers reach in the seventh, freshman Menifee pitches out of it. Seven complete. It's 5 nothing eggs. Done. Asa Lacey in line for his sixth win of the year. He's got that arm on ice. Number 35 was outstanding today, 11 strikeouts. 5 0 lead for AM. We go to the eighth inning. And a new pitcher for LSU. It's Todd Peterson. He is a junior out of Lake Mary, Florida. Six foot five, 230 pound right behind her. Surprised to see Peterson come in in this spot. I, uh, he can he second rule to only go through school at all. Why do you? Yep. I threw BP to him earlier this year in the in the spring. He can hit a bit of He hit one out to left center. Walks the leadoff man here. Foster's on for Will Frizzell. Here are the final numbers for Asa Lacey. Six innings. Gave up the one hit to Beloso, struck out 11, walked four. And again, I thought from the third inning on, he was almost untouchable. Yeah, he has been for a lot of this season. It's it's mid-90s, three pitches for a strike it was today. In fact, when he struggled with control today, he was really just struggling with the fastball, the, the slider and the changeup. Be their 25th win of the season. It's going to be too slow to the second baseman Broussard to think about the double play. They get one. Foster to second. There's one out for Zach Deloach. Again, starting on the mound in game two today. Will be Cole Henry's two and one on the year, 3.90 ERA for LSU. Well, Zach, well, Zach. We're not certain who Texas A&M is going to pop. The jump. His glove. Tough play for the freshman. Good heads up base runner by Foster. He was back tagging up on second base in case it was caught. Fly balls on a dead runner hard enough. And then you throw an obstacle in your way. That was a great effort. They've made two strikes to Deloach with Foster at second base. Peterson's pitch. That one is hit well to left. And DiGiacomo will get another chance. He'll make the grab this time. Ranging over toward the power alley. Two down. The Giacomo can cover some ground. There's no question about it. This outfield can cover a ton of them. See those were the that did not start game three or the midweek game. When you get hits in that game for Texas A&M. We scored nine in that game. Pop up right side. Broussard has it. No, he doesn't. 
Another run is going to score. Foster makes it six to nothing on another error for LSU. That should have been out number three. Broussard, the second baseman, comes in, and right about now, you know, he's in trouble. When he starts backpedaling right at the last minute, the wind is going to take this beyond it. It's it's blowing out to center field, so that ball ultimately is is going to keep blowing towards the outfield grass. But this is and this speed. So three unearned runs for the Aggies. Ground ball to Reed. Out of his glove. Everybody's safe. And this is starting to become a problem here for the Tigers. And they don't know how to stop it. Allen Dunn, pitching coach, on his way to the mound. Chris Reed has two errors a day. He had two errors in a season coming into the bell. So as a pitcher, and you've been in the situation many times, I'm sure, when things start falling apart behind you, it's not your fault. How do you how do you stay focused? Well, I think that's the point Alan Dunn going out right now is, it is let's let's not change it. I, I think what you try to do sometimes on the mound is take care of everything yourself when it gets into a spot like this. So throw the perfect pitch every single time. Try to get swing and miss every single time. On should not happen. Now here's Shoemake. What an RBI double his last time up. He's one for four. Six nothing Texas A&M. Hit hard to Smith. And he will hold on. Out number three. But another run across for the Aggies. As the defense has been no friend to LSU pitching today. Getting we did well my friend. We go to the bottom of the eighth here in Baton Rouge, a teaching moment for Paul Maneri. Uh, and he's had a lot of them today. There have been five errors in the field. Yeah, he, he's not light for pupils today if he wants to go teach. I mean, he's got a few options in there. And I think some of this is just talking about the wind and the route that Beloso took to the ball on first base that was in foul territory. Some of it is just frustration, too. I mean, just sitting and watching that happen five times today on, on really. I mean, the only ball that was hard to handle was the ball in the first that Smith ended up trying to be a little bit too quick on the double play. Besides that, all of them were, were pretty straightforward plays. But those you James men in the box chance to call quite a few games in the old Alec box. That missed. And Menifee walks Brock Mathis to lead off the eighth inning. There's you know, the maybe club. they didn't have a ballpark. Clear that. There's the club. Some bleachers there. There's just some planks. On Spanish. This is going to send Mathis to second base. Wild pitch on Menifee. Proof of the order. Trying to. And this is the fourth time. Going through the order here now for LSU. Mathis at second. Line drive, base hit. And Nolan Kane, the third base coach, holds up the runner. Smith nearly went too wide at first. He'll dive back into the bag. Runners at the corners, nobody out. And Watson coming up. Hey, this swing from Smith is set up by the 1-1 take because he took a pretty good slide at 1-1. He got him to a 2-1 count that ultimately got a pitch he can handle 2-1. And it's kind of a top top spin liner to right field. Logan Foster, the right fielder, and it's a good read on second by Mathis. And really no reason to take a chance right there either. You're not six runs in the eighth inning. The guy that really matters still hasn't put his helmet on right there. Foster. Charges airmailed the the cutoff man, and it was a good read by Smith because he saw the ball going high. Mikey Holder came out far enough to get that ball. Smith goes right there; he's probably out at second base. Well, 
Lefty and a righty warming up at the Texas A&M pen. Rob Childress hasn't made a move yet. And he's going to stay with Menifee. I think for a few reasons. One, you'd like to limit bullets in the bullpen if you can because you don't know how many you're going to need in the nightcap. The other is you want to see a freshman and see if he can get out of the spot right now because Menifee is one that, that they're going to count on more as this season goes on. This is a big spot in this ballpark against a top 10 ball club. Well, if you're LSU, if you're a fan of this ball club, this is what well, you've been waiting all day to see. Base runners on, best part of the order up. Zach Watson at the plate. But this is hitting two and back to back games this season. He was 0 for 4 last night. Texas AM has led since the top of the second inning. LSU has been flummoxed at the plate. Trying to get something going here. Line drive, center field, base hit. Mathis comes in. Smith to second. And the Tigers are on the board. It's six to one. That'll be it for the freshman Menifee. The back-to-back -back singles by the part of this order that could do some damage. Watson. Single to center on a fastball all the way from a 3-1 count looking dead red. And Rob Childress is out. We'll take the ball and they will go to the bullpen. Really our glass. Um. Antoine Duplan is one of the great hitters in this conference. 308 hits in his four years in Baton Rouge. He doesn't have any hits yet in this series. At KP, you, you get the feeling that it's only a matter of time, and it could be this time right here against Texas a and yeah, Every time he steps up, and the one difference with Duplantis this year that we didn't really see the first three is the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Duplantis has seven home runs. That's tops on this LSU ball club. and It's a team that can score them in bunches. They would like to score some in bunches right here. Trail at 6-1, but still nobody out. Two on right here. Duplantis coming, and he'll face the face of freshman left-hander Chris Weber, who's worked back and forth between the starting rotation, not rotation, but as a starter and coming out of the pen. 34 strikes out in 26 in the third for the freshman who comes in at a tough spot. Middle of this LSU lineup. But I think the reason they stay left here, Duplantis hits from the left side, re hits from the Weber has looked. Duplantis up, checks his three. Really haven't seen Duplantis comfortable yet in this series at the plate. It, it just doesn't seem. And again, they can change in a hurry. Yeah, they can change in one swing. Again, the wind blowing out from left to right fairly briskly. If he can get it up in the jet stream, goodbye. Hit well. Tough play for Blake. Out in left field, he slips after making the catch. He will be able to get it in without the runners advancing. I thought it was hit better than that. And it just kind of died out there despite the wind. So Duplantis is out on a fly ball. That'll bring up Reed. We'll see if it doesn't fill. Reed, 33, better than his season average of 319. They've already had two tough road trips. They go to Missouri next weekend. To Alabama to Arkansas those are the, the road trips that remain for LSU but you, you knock out at Georgia and at Mississippi State already those yeah. are two good ones to cross off the list line drive base hit for Reed Smith is being waved around he will score on his way to third is Watson runners at the corners still one out and it's six to two Reed delivers again just get the feeling when Reed goes up there that he's going to do something right with the bat. It, it's it's just the way this entire season is bad. He can he can turn a fastball around now. And the one thing about Reed is he doesn't swing a miss a whole lot. So when he gets up there, you're almost assured that he's going to put the ball in place somewhere. That's just how it's changed. Of walks and strikeouts for somebody that throws this hard. Four walks, 28 strikeouts, and 18 and two. Got 11 here in the eighties, but LSU has. North of here.
times the eighth inning strike. Through seven innings. And down the line. You hear it brought up more and more. The 3 2. Struck him out. Call it. Oh, 3 2 slider. Comes out of the bullpen, faces Willis, the pinch hitter, and gets him to go down on strike. Yeah, and I think I think that one surprised the freshman right there. Three two with with two runners on in a game this tight. You, you just expect that you're going to get a fastball, and he did. Pollock went with the slider through it right underneath the bat of the left hander, and, and that is a big time strikeout right there, and a big pitch on a three two count. Beloso had the only hit that Asa Lacy gave up. Another line drive for Beloso. That's going to plate Watson. And it's six to three. 24th run batted in for Cade. Just wearing out the middle of the field today, too. All three hits have come right back up the middle, and it's come in his previous three at bats. Beloso struck out his first at bat, then three singles to Texas. Tying run at the plate for the Tigers. Should have out front early. Arkansas took two out of three from Auburn this weekend. Struck him out. Boy, Collett makes quick work of Bianco. Even though he gives up the hit to Beloso, he will walk off with a three run lead. We Close go to the ninth. Job. Closer absolutely does his job. Two strikeouts for Colic. Sandwiched around a single to center, but it's still a three run egg. Website today. Well, it's been a great day for Texas AM, and it all starts with their starter, Asa Lacey, at 11 strikeouts today. Yeah, Lacey was six strong. He comes out of the offense. This was it for AM for a while. Three run double for Cam Blake back in the second inning. And it would stay that way until the seventh, and that's when LSU. LSU helped it. Two innings, the two errors in the inning for LSU. Good two runs for AM in that inning. The Braden Shoemake triple added another one right there, then a solo run in the eighth for AM. But LSU answers back. It's three of their own in the bottom half as we head to the ninth. Blake, two for three with that three run double. And one pitch from Peterson is one out here in the top half of the ninth. That's Morris who pinch hit in the seventh, and he's a quick out here in the ninth. Yeah, five errors, just uncharacteristically bad day in the field for LSU. And Antoine Duplantis, he's, you know, of course, chasing Eddie Furness, as is Jake Mangum at Mississippi State. But he's 0 for 4 today. He could be hitless for the second straight game. Uh, yeah, and it'd be the first time this year that that's happened for Duplantis today. A couple of strikeouts. And a ground ball left side. Reed tried to cut it off. It goes to Smith. That was probably the right play anyway. Maybe Reed should have just got out of his way. It's out number two. A general idea for third baseman is if you can get it, try to get it, just because it, it shortens that throw and makes it so much easier. Reed, this one kind of goes under his glove. He's trying to make the play. I, I don't think he was trying to let that one go. Another ground ball to Smith. Seven pitch inning. How about that? Last chance for the Tigers. They're down three. A minute. Classic. Freebie Parkerston. Players for Texas A&M. Three runs, six hits, five errors for LSU as we go to the bottom of the bottom of the ninth here at Alec Box Stadium. Kyle Peterson, Clay Matvick, and our crew. This is Sage on the year that ranks 14th most in the nation. Line drive, base hit, LSU's in business. Could be two. The Giacomo, good speed. He's thinking about three, he's going. Throw, not in time. Giovanni De Giacomo with a leadoff triple here in the ninth. 
His first triple of the year. Lead off triple, and he pulled the shooter on second base, too. I mean, he slowed up for DiGiacomo. Fastball in and a half, hook down the right field line. You know it's going to go for extra bases the minute that it gets fair down that right field line. Logan Foster goes, did it. You watch this, though. I mean, he, he slowed up when he hit second base and then had another gear. Homer King gets him down. Well, just about hopped into the end and dug out if it had. DiGiacomo would have scored. Instead, it's a leadoff triple, and LSU's not done yet. Runners on third and less than two outs. LSU needs three to tie. They can win it. They can find four. The one, two. Hit hard. Base hit. Here comes to Giacomo. And it's six to four. How about this bottom of the order, yep. KP? Who says that there's slouches down there? Yeah, this is huge. I mean, you go 8-9 to start the inning. DeJacomo, the freshman, dribbles down the right field line. Now Mathis comes up on a pretty good pitch. It was a slider out away from him, but he keeps the barrel in the zone long enough to get enough of that, shoot it out to left field. And now LSU's in business because you got the dudes coming up next. Slider that may have been off the plate, too. But Mathis stays on it. Didn't get all of it, but got enough of it. Shoemaker couldn't make the field. She's got a chance. It'll get under your skin a little bit. Matt, the home run from this one. Smith. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of great at bats. Dirt won it down a little bit. That one hung up there, just stayed out of the zone. Now 2 2 to Smith. Mathis at first. So is he already burned for the rest of the day? Yeah, I, I don't think you can see him in the nightcap based on where he is now. Two balls, two strikes to the leadoff man, Smith. Hit well. Down the line. Has a chance. Off the base of the wall. Mathis to third. He'll hold there. And Smith nearly tied this game up. A double for Josh. Two on, still nobody out for LSU here in the ninth. Well, in a bat that started 0-2. So for Kalik, first pitch fastball fouled off, and he comes back with a backdoor breaking ball to get to 0-2. Then Smith starts going to work. Fouls off a really good fastball, then an elevated fastball. Takes a fastball up and away. So we're 1-2 now. Break of all fouled straight back. Now 2-2 two two on a pitch that just missed. And as this at bat went on, Smith looked more and more comfortable off the bat. I think he thought it had a chance to get out. It doesn't. Wynn holds it fair. Hits it. Hung up. And now Zach Watson at the plate. He had an RBI single his last time up. Collick comes set. I think. It is a slider. Struck him out. First out of the inning. That's the third strikeout for Collick. And that's the one Watson's got to get because this is not where Collick wanted to throw it. I mean, it's it's a backup slider right down the middle of the plate. That's the one that a lot of times is hit a long ways. Instead, Watson swings right through it. Collick gets a huge strikeout with the plan is coming up. Back to back games. I guess bless you. Lock it up. One ball, two. And now, if you're Colic, what do you? She makes head at shortstop because with Smith's speed, if it gets into the outfield, he's probably going to score. I think you crowd in the. The Planis is is very comfortable using the left side of the field. Casey Colic, the junior college transfer, was at Glenn JC last year. He's been great at the back end of the bullpen so far this season. Trying to finish this one. Got him! Huge strikeout for Colic. His fourth since coming out in relief. Okay, so both strikeouts have been on sliders, and both have been sliders in spots that Colic didn't really want them. So here's the entire at bat to the plan. His fastball misses off the plate, and he comes down with a backdoor slider that evens the count up at one and one. Now he's got him in a one-two hole. Fastball elevated. That's where it felt like the plan is was really trying to go the other way. But watch this slider. I mean, it, it really, it just stays there up and out of the zone. 
both of those strikeouts for Watson and Duplantis are both on sliders and not exactly in the spot that Casey Collick wanted. Worked out all right there. Collick from the full line. Ball. Ass back on the team right before the start of the year. Hits it well toward the gap. In center. Long run. Making the catch is Zach Deloach. And that's going to end the ball game. But Chris Reed makes a bid to clear the bases and tie the game. Wow. As it happens, AM gets the win 6-4. to four. Never a doubt, huh? I mean, off the bat, I thought we had a tie ball game because this ball's hit well. The wind is, is going to push it, in this case, a little bit back towards Deloach, and that may have been the difference. They were shading Reed the other way in the outfield. Deloach can really go get it. The wind held it up just enough for Deloach to run it down. So strikeout, strikeout, and a deep fly ball to center field. Casey College gets the save, not exactly the way that they would want it, but if you're AM, you'll take the win any way you can get it. Series even at one now, and we're setting up for a nice rubber match tonight on ESPN2. That was all right, huh? Terrific comeback by LSU. They were they were lost deep into the uh, ball game. Came back, scored four in the eighth and ninth, make it a ball game. But it is a loss for Paul Maneri and the Tigers. Six four, the final. Texas A&M wins it. The second game of our doubleheader. 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 Central on ESPN2, and of course, the ESPN app. What a game for Asa Lacey, the starter for AM. He's now 6-0. We'll see you in a little bit. So long for Baton Rouge.